guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. It is a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. On this episode, we are joined by Simbaza, host and creator of the Simbaza Podcast. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast, a weekly chat about socially conscious topics impacting the culture. So we have one of our most favorite co-hosts. Simbaza, host and creator of the Simbaza podcast, who proudly hails from the Republic of Kenya. He is a two-time nominee for Best African Diasporan Podcast by the APVA for 2020 and 2022. He has also been a presenter at Afro's Audio Podcast Festival in 2020 and 2021. He will be a ambassador for Afro's Audio podcast festival for 2024. Welcome to the show, Sambaza. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, sir. Good to have you here. Um, This is our International Women's Month recap and wrap-up show. So glad to have you here so that we could uh, talk about those episodes that we did i can't believe we had so many it seemed like a little like this was really literally supposed to be a black history project and it rolled into two series so um thoughts on that yeah it's um it was really interesting when you started off just saying we're going to do four and then here we are just uh clearing international women's month and i must say i learned a lot in this in this few episodes. Well, I'll say few, but there are a lot of episodes. For sure. So content. Yeah, for sure, definitely. And so the game plan is we're gonna take a look back at some of those episodes. Um I have a few clips um from the series that we did for March, the for International Women's Month. We had some really great guests. And it's amazing that we were able to <laughs> come up with these guests in a really short time frame. Like I said, this was really all very organic guys. You know, um, Sabaza and I are part of a podcast collective and we just kind of had a brainstorming session and came up with some ideas and, you know, put our heads together and routed it you know, reached out and talked to some folks and we made it happen for you guys. And we really came up with some really nice uh, pieces of work, I would say. Um, So let's get into the first one um, that was episode 147 featuring Miss Tiffany B that uh, kicked off the International Women's Month series for Health Matters. And so um, let's take a look. So we are tend to, we tend to be the head of the family. We we mm-hmm. are the caretakers, the nurturers of the family. So we tend to take care of everyone else, and we leave ourselves to the side before we go. It, it's usually um, more advanced. Our situations are more advanced. So we don't pay. We don't have self care. Um, number one for African-American women. We, we don't take care of ourselves as much as we should. And when we do finally step out on a ledge and go and take care of ourselves, um, we tend to be pushed to the side or our uh, symptoms are trivialized by the healthcare mm-hmm. professional. So we have to be very um, astute about being an advocate for ourselves. We have to know, We first we have to do preventative care. So, you know, that's one of the things that we don't do as uh, African-American women. Um, we, again, we take care of everybody else because that's what it historically has been and that's what it is now. So uh, that's one of the major disparities. So that was a clip from uh, episode 147 featuring Tiffany B, where we talked about uh, various health matters and your thoughts on that, Sabaza. Yeah, I think the education that we learned from there was highly, it was actually a great start to the all the other episodes that came by because it set the base about health matters. And you'll see as you go along, as we do the review. Um, in that particular clip, she's talking about the way women are being or she reveres women uh, on how astute they are with regard to how they tackle issues especially health matters and this is just a clip i would advise you to go listen to the whole episode or watch the episode because it tells a lot about how women are kind of sidelined and then how they should project themselves and be able to stand firm on uh, medicine matters actually health matters and 
th that's what I got from that particular clip and the for rest sure, of definitely. Yeah. Um, we as Black people, men and women, need to you know put our health as a priority, but especially women who like. Tiffany mentioned in the clip, busy taking care of everyone else's needs and tend to put um, their needs, you know, last or even, you know, not neglecting them all together and, you know, ignoring some things that could be, that could be prevented with uh, exercise and diet had it been caught earlier on. So um, you definitely, um, I agree that we should put our, our health first, get those routine checks and things like that we talked about. Um, please revisit that episode, guys, either on the audio side or the visual side, which is on YouTube as well. All right. Um, there was one other really great clip um, with Miss Tiffany and where Sambasa has some good uh, nuggets here. Well, let's go to this clip next. We're saying the woman is a champion and us as the men of the household. Now I'm going to try to champion for the men. What can we do to help out? Can we help out or can we help you out in terms of when we go to the, when you when you're in this time of need in the, let's say your health is, you know, it's, it's not a, of the best. What can we do to help? Where can we play our part? Or what part can we play? Or what, what role can we play? What, what role you can play? Yes. <laughs> Even though we're the head of the house, what, what can we do? You know, be supportive of your mate. Listen to them when they tell you they're not feeling well. If they're saying they're hurting, then believe mm -hmm. them. You know, one of the things that women do well, especially African-American women, is I don't know, I don't think a race of women, I don't think any other race do it better than an African-American woman. And that is work in spite of. Okay, so my thoughts on that one. That was, that was a very strong statement. It was. And I wanted to come in because as a man, because we, we tend to not look at it on the other side you know because we're not we're not women we're men and it's always a thing that we have to help we're together you know if you're a you have a spouse you're a significant other be it your mom your wife your sister or cousin right mm -hmm. um you should be able to help out in any way you can and understand where they're coming from especially when they tell you they're hurt you know they might right. say they're hurt but and for real, it's not that, you know, they might toss it like, oh, it's just, just regular stuff. No, don't take it as regular stuff. Look for the cues that you need to look for and then help out. That was the most important thing because as men, we kind of like, okay, you're fine. Okay. True. And I would add that, um, you know, remind each other of things, you know, you know, we may need to get our health checkups with the doctor or, you know, what, when men hit 40, you know, you need to be starting to get your prostate exam scheduled and things like that. And just, you know, take care of each other in that way. Even our elders, we talked about uh, caring for elders and things like that. You know, before my mom's um, health worsened, I did, um, you know, act as a big caregiver and with her care. And that was, you know, a lot to take on. And a lot of people are doing it every day. So, um, you know, these things are really, you know, important for sure. And I think, Jen, one more thing I want to add is, I think when you talk about men, you say prostate, we're going to have to look at it starting from maybe about 30 years old because the mm. age is a bit lower now. Okay. So maybe when there's marriage, looking at marriage, when you get married, you know, you kind of look at the family history and then say, hey, you know what, because your maybe your parent had it, you might want to have those checkups. So, yeah, those are things you might want to look at. Just a tidbit. For sure, definitely. And then uh, that was 147. 148, we talked about mental health and destigmatizing mental health for Black women and really the Black family. Uh, we put Black women, since it was Women's Month, we kind of tackled the whole family with that uh, destigmatizing mental health because it is a stigma. There is certainly a stigma with mental health. You know, um, it's not promoted as much to get therapy and things like that and discuss your feelings, you know, doing breathing exercises, all the things, you know, keeping a journal, all of the things that um, will assist in your mental health. Uh, 
is, you know, kind of on a quiet, quiet, you know, and things like that. And so we talked about that in this episode. Um, any thoughts before we show the clip? Um, let's think about the angry black woman. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when you talk about the angry black woman, maybe at that point, things are not the way they're supposed to be. So it's not because they're angry, but maybe they're stressed out. And this is part of the, their mental health. You get to, to a breaking point. Now, how can we streamline it before it gets to that point? Okay. All right. Let's go to the clip before we sh share anything additional. I have some thoughts, but let's go to the clip. My a cultural thing. However, at this time, we're looking at the limited access to to healthcare and social economic disparities. Maybe my, mine will be on the social economic part where, or maybe the cultural part where we can kind of digest that. So how does it impact women, black women in mental health outcomes? There, it, depending on the um, therapist or, me, or medical provider that black women go to, hopefully mm -hmm. they are culturally competent because there are still individuals who believe that black women ex exaggerate their pain levels, mm -hmm. um, that we're very much dramatic in our symptoms, or we don't know what we're talking about. So first we have to visit, go to, and um, seek out culturally competent individuals. Okay, let's do the next clip and then we'll discuss. Let's see if I can. Let's just go right into the next clip with Denise. Shout out to Denise D. Moore, licensed uh, mental health counselor who uh, did a phenomenal job speaking with us. We did appreciate that so much. Uh, let's see if I can go here. Angry. It's a lot of feelings out there that we do not identify. There's a lot of thoughts that we confuse as feelings. So mm -hmm. write that down. Cry if you need to cry. Um, if you have a lot of pent up anger, mm -hmm. scream it out. Play a song. Sing it to the top of your lungs. You may need to go for a run or go to the gym. If you don't want to cry in front of people, <laughs> go into the shower. Go into the shower and cry. There's a release that needs to take place. But you have to start recognize it and own it. I guess Sam Baza said I was talking too much. <laughs> no, he rang the bell. Sorry. So I hope. And so I, I hope that was, that was good, helpful. Good point. No, that that's to say mm -hmm. it's a good point. I also say gem. That's a gem right there. There we go. <laughs> ah, Shay. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? Your thoughts on that, Sabasa? I think the first part is where it basically sums up everything. Remember when we when I said the uh, ABW angry black woman? Um, it it's sort of like they misunderstood. You get the right person, and based on that clip, she said, "Be intentional about who you want," and when you go to your care provider. Make sure that she's aware of your your shortcomings, right? Because you're a person, and then when they understand you, they'll be able to assist you much better. And I, I think when we come to this, the first two that we talked about, it was more about being intentional about who you seek help from. Right. Yes, there are always going to be those issues of being limited to what you can get in terms of health, but fight for it. Don't just let it go, you know, and say, you know, just because I live here, I don't have access to to any programs. No, go out there, search. And if you go searching, you will find what you're looking for, because um, they, there's a lot of help out there in this world right now in, in terms of mental health, both in men and women. For sure. Definitely. Um, being intentional is crucial in finding the appropriate and proper uh, health care provider um she mentioned you know women may want to seek out a female uh, doctor or african-american woman doctor for example 
that would be sensitive to their needs and things like that. I know I had to uh, change GYNs recently. And so I, you know, kind of had to do a little research and such and got a few recommendations and ended up with a person of color, but I didn't find a black woman. Um, but it was a person, it's a person of color and, uh, and she's younger because that's a consideration too. Um, sometimes you want an maybe older, more seasoned doctor thinking that, oh, they're more experienced, but sometimes, you know, you may be comfortable with someone who is younger and, you know, their training is more, you know, current and up to date. So it's different ways you could look at that. What about when she said that issue of you can vent out your anger, take a walk and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Do you think it's practical on your side? Would you do something like that? For sure. Those are the things that we were talking about that are, you know, still a stigma in the community. Simple things like you mentioned, like taking a walk, journaling, um, you know, you may just scream in the shower, but don't keep those feelings and anger bottled up because it's not healthy for you at all. You know, she is a licensed uh, health professional. And so, um, you know, we heard it from her. It's not good to keep those things in. And it's something simple that if you're not ready to sign up for therapy that you can do, you know, right there on your own. So I agree that that would be something good to do for sure. Awesome. I believe that too. Definitely. Um, and even if, you know, exercising, there's so many different ways, you know, and outlets that you can get into. I know I do a Zumba class with some ladies. Um, I've missed several <laughs> classes, but I mean, it's, you know, it's fun. And it's, you know, being in a group and listening um, and, you know, trying to learn the routines and things like that. It's fun. It's a good time. So whatever, you know, that may not be the thing for you, but find something that works for you. So let's move along. Uh, episode 149 featured, uh, we talked about pr promoting healthy lifestyle. So uh, keeping with our mind, body, and soul, if you will. And we've got more to come on that too. But we talked about, um, you know, the physical um, piece of health and promoting healthy lifestyles. And we had uh, the wonderful Flo Elkins. And so let's take a look at one of these clips from that particular episode. Let's see. Okay, so Flo Elkins was our... Um, fitness and wellness uh, strategist and she talked about um, you know healthy diet and things like that anything you want to share on this episode well, I try to get it together with our clips <laughs> oh, um, she was talking about the vegan diet that she mm -hmm. took on and what was unique about it is how you get around it to be able to find out things that are more geared towards the vegan life, not vegan lifestyle. She made us correct that. She said in a vegan diet, veganism is something else that is not the same. Um, however, she also told us about how to exercise, how to keep fit, walking and stuff like that. So diet and exercise is what she was recommending anyone who's, you know, trying to get themselves. And as women, as women, um, women need to take care of themselves in a holistic way, meaning that as we talk about health care, you know, you go to the doctor, and then you also have to take care of your mental health. And then now we're talking about your exercise part where, you know, you have to make sure you look at your health, not health, but your exercise and your diet, because that's usually the start of everything. Correct. Definitely. Okay. I think I have what i was looking for thank you for sharing that let's go here thoughts on those substitutions for like meat and things like that well i am a big beyond burger eater okay. <laughs> okay. and i know a lot of people don't like beyond burger some people like impossible burger and all that whatever but i do eat beyond burger products and I will also say I'm a stock owner. So, you know, I'm making a little money off of the money that I spend eating it. 
but I also believe in eating lots of vegetables, fruits, and whole foods. I eat. Okay. You know, uh, shout out to Flo Elkins. Uh, we had a uh, great time with her, and we have Tiffany Bird. And shout out to her. Thank you for joining in. And um, the cool thing that she said, we talked about, um, a lot of people in the in the chat start talking about this piece about when you grew up, cleaning your plate. You know, you even said that, you say that to your kids. Sp touch on that part, um, how that, you know, really, I don't want to say it's, it really sounds like something that, you know, may have been like from slavery times and it just stuck along some of that post-traumatic slave syndrome type of thing. You better clean your plate. <laughs> you know, she's saying you know, they're still not going to have it. Even if you do eat all your food on your plate and it's just kind of a bad habit, you know what I mean? Speak to that. Yeah, I think when you talk about it being a uh, slave, but I, I, I'm from Africa. So when I grew up, we were told the same thing. You have to finish what you're, mm -hmm. you're eating. So when they put whatever on your plate or food, you have to make sure you finish. Well, they said there are other people who are hungry. So finish the food that you're given and be thankful. Um, the thankful part, yes, I agree. We have to be thankful. Now, the portion sizes is, is what is lacking there. Um, I'm going to say I'm thankful to my mom because she used to make sure we had a fruit and made, the food was balanced. You had meat, you had veggies and what have you. I never understood that. I just started understanding when I grew older. However, yes, uh, it's not a good idea to tell kids to finish whatever is on the plate. The most thing... I think we should tell them is just put enough. And then when you're done eating, you can always go back for more. I like that. I like that for sure. Um, you know, especially when if it's maybe a big meal, like a Thanksgiving dinner, people are, you know, <laughs> heaping this food on your plate. And even little ch kids, you know, and like she said, they kind of know like, oh, I had enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they'll tell you and you're like, you know, so don't push your kids to finish your plate, guys. Um, Thanksgiving you know. and Christmas, that's there's an exception to that. <laughs> you know, that's that's exception. Adults, at that time, we always go all out, you know, you eat what you're not supposed to eat. And you're going to take the time and enjoy your meals because it, it's, it's, it's hard to prepare those meals, you know. That's true, but um, like you said, let's be considerate of portion size and things like that. Um, I have, you know, a lot of people in my family who um, have diabetes. I don't have it, thank God. <laughs> but um, you, they have to really be considered, you know, think about what they eat and the portions and all of that. And, you know, being, in, you know, in the household with folks, you have to be considerate of that. And so... Um, you know, it's something to just keep in mind and be mindful of. You know, there's children that have to deal with diabetes too. So let's just be mindful of those things as well. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Let's, because, um, oh my God, we still have two more episodes to cover as we um, wine wrap up this series on International Women's Month. Uh, so we talked about the Promoting Healthy Lifestyles episode with Flo Elkins, and we had some really good topics covered on that. Um, we moved on to episode 150 with the fabulous Miss Lisa Woolfork um, and talked about activism in her art and how she combines the two in a really creative and unique way. Uh, let's get into those clips with Lisa Woolfork. <laughs> outrage I was inspired to do it by love and by it I refer to gradually beginning to mobilize and then eventually more fully activate into the aggressive resistance against white supremacy and that showed up in our community in Charlottesville Virginia as early as, well, for quite some time, but it started to matter in around 2013, 2014, when the statues are Confederate slash Civil War participation trophies 
that were installed in these public parks as a way to, you know, to set up racial segregation, we were trying to get those removed. And the white supremacists didn't like that. And so they came and invaded the community. There were fights in the street. There were, um, in the afternoon, a young woman was. Okay. So yeah, um, Lisa shared about how she got involved and what kind of inspired her to get involved um, with some activism movements in her town and, uh, you know, shared some great information with us. Some of your thoughts or anything that was kind of a takeaway from that conversation? Yeah. Well, I like the way she said participation trophies because like everybody who's handed a trophy, you get a trophy, you get a trophy for all what you did. And it's the way she explained herself on the start of mm-hmm. to, uh, the start of activism, activism. And it was something that she felt she needed to do. And as a woman of color, these things are hard to do, you know, uh, and she just mustered all the strength that she could get and decided, you know, enough is enough and let me take action. And we can see it in her art that, she, like you say, she encompassed it with her activism. And she's a very staunch activist uh, when it comes to things of color and defending rights of colored people. And we do appreciate th- that from her. For sure. Let's look at one more clip that we have available for that one. And I'm sure, hopefully, you meant people of color, not colored people. Did you say colored when, people? <laughs> when, when, what did I go wrong when I said? Oh no, people? I'm giving you a hard time. I'm giving you a hard time. You said colored <laughs> people, but I think you meant people of color. Okay. Okay. All right, Samantha. Uh, let's go here. <laughs> Some people um, gain most of their power and influence by depriving other people of their own power and influence. There are some who truly believe and have been indoctrinated to believe that women are inferior and are meant to are put on this earth to be baby makers. And by that reason, they they tend to believe very firmly in gender as as a, as a scientific fact, when it is not, when gender is a social fact, not a scientific fact. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's not ignorance. It's not ignorance. Ignorance would imply something that could be corrected. Ignorance is solved by knowledge. And how much knowledge have we had, to name one example, of, for example... Okay, Lisa is just too deep, okay? <laughs> Look at her. When, when her book comes out, I buy it, okay? <laughs> I don't know about you, but um, I will make sure uh, Dr. Lisa Wolfork is working on a book. We did mention that on the episode, and so I'm really excited for her. We talked about her uh, win of the Ambies. Uh, she was fresh off a 2024 AMB podcast win, and but she's actually working on a book project. And so, um, as you can see, she's an excellent speaker and so passionate about these topics. So, uh, I'm sure that'll be a great read. Uh, so, what's the thoughts? Additional thoughts. Remember what I said about the Handmaid's Tale? Yeah. That's kind of what it sounded like, you know, coming up. Um, there's still people who believe up to now that uh, the woman is in fear. One more thing that was profound, and I've asked that question because I'm also part of the union. I'm a, I'm a representative in a union shop at work. Most of the time, we always try to fight for stuff, and then the management always has the upper hand to something, and they will say, they'll use this word as management perceives, you know, management says this, you know, it, it'll always go towards that point. And as much as you struggle, you never know when you have won. And that's why I asked her one question about what is a win? Because mm-hmm. like the Roe v. Wade, um, I used that as an example. A lot of people have been fighting for it and it's almost 50 years. And then to have fought for it for that long, only to come up and be told, hey, you know what, that's it. It's done. When do you consider it a win? 
you know, because you want to win. Right. Yeah, that was, um, and what's going on with that is just, you know, it's just really shocking. But yeah, totally. Um, that was some good uh, discussions and points that you pushed on that episode, for sure. Definitely. And um, I love how we talked about how, you know, sewing is a great part of her art and, you know, just being creative is really a part of our culture. If you think about it, you know, how many people's mother or grandmother sewed and things like that. And then just all those background stories of what, you know, led them to do that particular craft. And the, those are just part of the story, stories that she shares. You know, she has designers on. She, you know, she just talks about all different types of topics on her podcast, podcast which is called Stitch Please. So please support Lisa Wolfwork. Um, and we will have the links of all of our guests so that in their businesses and links so that you can reach out uh Denise D. Moore, who is a mental health professional, she has a podcast as well and content out here. Um, she has some great content on TikTok even that you can check out and support. Uh, you know, Tiffany B. is a health professional. Um, you may want to just, you know, shout out, out and send her a note and, you know, support her. Uh, Flo Elkins has a thriving business. So we definitely want to uh, support our independent um women business owners and creators for sure so i want to add that in before we get to the last one um any additional thoughts on that simbaza i have a question did they do the underground the underground railroad train or the underground railroad did they use prints on um clothing as part of a design to show how the how the direction is to head up north. Did they ever do that? Is it part of history or is people on clo clothing items? You know, I want right. to say that I've read that like the designs and braids mm -hmm. were a part of that communication. Um, we know like songs, you know, some of the spirituals and things like that were a part of the communication. But I don't know that clothing um, especially, you know, thinking back in that time period, what they were wearing would communicate anything. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting thought, but I mean, I know, um, and this is just a you know, quick span of memory, but I don't know, that's interesting that, so you think there may have been, or are you just wondering? I, think I may have read it somewhere. I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. There were so many ways um, that people, you know, left communication and things like that. And then the people who supported, you know, it's like some of the white people who, you know, lent themselves to the movement and supported even back then um, and were abolitionists and things like that. So, yeah, that actually reminds me that uh, you shared about um, a slavery um, when you went on your travels. Oh, yeah. Um, this was when I had gone to New Orleans and went to the plantation and they had this great, it was an out of this world experience for one. And then I think I explained how it was. And then they gave you these, um, they give you these tags, which had pictures of the kids who were in, who were enslaved. And then at the back of it, you had information that you could go and check out and find out more about them. Mm -hmm. And it was yours to keep. So one of those, I must say it was one of the great things that one can ever want to go and view in terms of, um, or visit in terms of having to get more knowledge regarding black history. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that you shared about that. Um, I don't know that I, you know, going into plantation would be on my to-do list. But, I mean, you know, we have to know our history. Otherwise, you know how that saying goes. So I'm glad that you um, were able to take your family there and um, have that experience. Because, like, what you shared, it was, you know, quite memorable. So. Yeah, I think it was, it was it's, it's, a mem it's memorable. Oh, mm -hmm. one for the like you say, one for the age, one for the ages. 
definitely. Right. Okay. Yeah. So this last one that we want to share actually kind of rolled into the top of April, um, but it went right along with the theme of um, international, you know, incredible uh, women's stories who we wanted to uplift and share. And we talked about women in sports on episode 151 with Gladys Mahochi. She was phenomenal. Uh, let's get into this clip and we will kind of talk about that particular episode. And um, if you guys have not already, please like, share, subscribe. We appreciate you. And let's check this one out. The highest paid athlete female athlete and she should get at least a million but she has to play two leagues the yes. Russian league and then the wnba that's how she made up to one million now you're talking about one person who's uh, a person like angel reese who's playing um uh, in the yeah. she hasn't even gone professional yet and she's oh. making 1.75 that's that's pretty good yeah yeah so you find uh, that's another conversation that needs to be had because like the women they have to go to play pro and combine their salaries to be able to, you know, I, I don't want to say make it, but at least to be able to make a good, decent amount of money. Right. Yeah. A lot of them go international, too, so that they can have better opportunities um, for earning as well, right? Right, right. Sorry. I, I, meant, I didn't mean professional. I meant professional overseas. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, no, but that was a good point. What do you uh, share on this one, Tabaza? Oh yeah, that was uh, great because here we are in this age in 2024 and we are actually not for the salaries, you know, like one 1.75, even still 1.75, that's like a 10 day deal for one of those, like it's a 10 day contract for a regular NBA player. Now I know right. that is, it has to do with advertising and how much is invested on the sport. However, there could be some level of parity, but yeah. it's telling that now there's something that's working in the in the midst that is making sure that women are coming up in terms of the money aspect. Now, like she said, 1.75. What's your need to go rush to the NBA to the WNBA? You can stay for a while, play the game, develop the game, become much better. So by the time you leave, the quality of the game becomes, you know. Um, becomes much better than what you would have had. And then coaches keep the players for longer. Like, can you imagine if uh, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese was playing, were known from the time they became rookies and they mm -hmm. played all the four years, like they were going back to back at each other. That would have created more and more hype for the game of basketball for the women, even though it is, it's hyped up. I think they had 18.7 million viewers View, oh, viewership wow. right on one of the games one of the title games so that is in, in itself telling about the status of the game so it, it's great. actually the final had 18.7 million views so that's telling that people are wanting to watch if it was for her yes but there is some conversation being being had with regard to it and then I, we also talked about the women who also work in the industry um in the newsroom Mm -hmm. I think um, that was part of it. Or, right. Yeah. Do you have the clip or are going to? Uh, I don't know if I have that one. Let me see which one I have. Yeah. I didn't want to jump ahead. Well, as you're looking for it, also, I want viewers to remember that uh, the reason why Gladys is also mentioned in this case, um, she was mentioned amongst some Kenyan players because they were a group of Kenyan players who actually mm -hmm. came to the U.S. to play basketball. And they opened up doors for other players to start playing the game of basketball. Hopefully, uh, this might be a start to me personally, trying to get a hold of some of them and keep getting to know their side of the story because it has not been told yet. I haven't heard that story being told. Well, it's probably told in clips and bits and pieces or in um, you know street conversations or backyard barbecue conversations, but they were a particular group that actually paved the way and made women basketball to be known in Kenya. Any luck on that, Jen? Okay, sorry about that. So let me sh uh, show you guys this one. I'm not sure which one this one is, but it's one of the ones. Huh? 
we'll take Kenny. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's go. So let's see. We're gonna have to go listen to and watch the stream. Yes, please. That'd be great. If it yeah, don't forget to subscribe too. Subscribe and like. Share some comments. Tell us what we can do on this. There are still challenges um, coming up in the in the studios based on what you see. Because I know we are not in the we're not in the in the studios. We we don't have anyone in there. But from what you see, do you think this is there's a better representation and do you think that they still have some challenges when they are presenting how do you feel about that yeah so uh when it comes to when i look at presenters uh, first of all you know when you talk about uh, the women in sports there's always you'll always have where you have to promote uh, gender equality because that's prevalent everywhere in all the jobs you know in all the professions so that in itself we know that uh Chances are, as they go in there, chances are they're not being paid the same as the men. Women always end up earning less. Mm -hmm. So so that's one thing. You find that uh, they may have the time. Okay, and then let me see if I can go right into the other one that I... Athlete, female athlete, okay. and she should get at least a million, but she has to play two leagues. The yes. Russian League and then the WNBA. That's how she made up to one million. Now you're talking about one person who's uh, a person like Angel Reese who's playing um, in the. Yeah. She hasn't even gone professional yet, and she's oh. making one point seven five. That's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So you find uh, that's another conversation that needs to be had because, like the women, they have to go to play pro and combine their salaries to be able to, you know. I, I don't want to say make it, but at least to be able to make a good, decent amount of money. Right. Yeah. A lot of them go international too, so that they can have better opportunities um, for earning as well, right? Right, right. Sorry. I, I meant, I didn't mean profession. I meant prof Okay. So, yeah, um, those were ones from the episode with Miss Gladys Mahochi. We had a really great conversation about women in sports, like we talked about the NIL piece. Um, Angel, Re is it Angel Reese? Is that it? Okay, yes. And then, um, you know, how things were different from, like, when she was playing um, and really, if more than a few years ago to now, um, whoever, who would have ever thought that college, on the college level, that they would be compensated that way because I had always thought it was unfair for years, you know, especially like when I was in school, you know, the players, their faces are on t-shirts and cups, but they don't, and they're literally trying to hustle up a meal in the dining hall, you know what I mean? Like, can I get a swipe on your card? <laughs> yeah, that was the NIL. That's what she was talking about, the NIL. Yeah. For sure. So it, times have changed for sure, but like we still have a lot, a long way to go for equality with women. Um, yes. That is true. But we're getting there. You know, it starts like a step. I don't know. We never mentioned about tennis as well. Um, I think uh, there was a fight with the Williams sisters regarding their pay, and mm -hmm. I forget the other lady. Um, she was also, she was one. One of the, well, I think she won the Wimbledon, but she's always there. You'll see her. Um, I think by the time last year, by last year, the pay had increased. It was not like it was before. So they, there was some gap. The gap had been reduced. Yeah, definitely. So uh, that was a good episode. And that took us into April where we are now. Uh, we do have some good things planned for you all. Um, and guess we'll keep that under wraps for now <laughs> as we still, you know, finishing touches on the content. But uh, yeah, we will, um, we're, the plan is to bring you some more content to um, acknowledge what did I want to cover. So one thing we can talk about the, the subject matter is just for what's on the horizon. We did want to acknowledge Autism Awareness Month. So there is some plans to discuss that in a capacity um, a Black uh, counselor who is a male. Um, so a counselor, so from a male perspective, we have that as uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. 
is approaching us in May. So these are just some of the things. Um, Earth Month is this month too. So we may um, do that and talk about sustainability. Um, part of, or a side hustle that I have is being a reseller. And a big part of the, you know, purpose behind being a reseller is the sustainability piece. And it's really good for the planet um, and such. I kind of want to you know, share a bit on that. So we just have a lot of different things as far as what's coming up next and then some additional conversations with some creators. You know, we love to do that. I'm, I'm glad you talked about the clothes and I'm happy that you are focusing on the earth clothes, you know, trying to create sustainable um, clothing because, you know, they talk about Shein. I've read, I read an article about the Shein where they make these clothes so many mm -hmm. so fast mm -hmm. and so cheap mm -hmm. that even after they make the profit, then there's an issue of fine. It's out of out of the it's out of the hype. Uh, well, it's out of fashion at that time, mm -hmm. and they have to get rid of it. And when they do get rid of it, it's a lot of clothes that is gotten. Oh has my gotten god! Out. So, being earthly conscious is great. And since Earth Day is approaching, I think yeah, that's a good way of talking about some of these industries. Yes, and I thought you were going to share additionally, but they literally take all of the clothes and just dump it. Um, I one of so I one of the my platforms is um, a site called Whatnot, and so you actually like live stream there. One of the Whatnot sellers went live from where they dump it, and she actually like showed the video of it, and it's just crazy. And she says so she went and tried to grab as much as she could, and she actually like broke out in tears about it because i guess it is kind of or it is you know shocking that they just you do this type of waste in this manner and it you know is pretty um it's not good for the planet <laughs> it's not good for the mm -hmm. environment at all so yeah these things go on and so you know to, to re you know put it in someone else's hands you know is a sustainable practice as, as well as many other things and i would love to share some of the other ways that you can be sustainable and you know that you may not um, be aware as well so i think that would be a good uh thing we could talk about so i have a question before we, we break out out of all these topics which one yeah. stood out for you in terms mm -hmm. and i'm not saying that it was a the best mm -hmm. which one just came out and you were like okay i got in as a podcaster and i love the show um i would say maybe our first one about the health matters you know i'm coming um off of you know losing my mom and a lot of health challenges that she went through and just having that conversation where you know something as simple as you know diet exercise and just changing making simple changes could have you know changed someone's health had they put that in place maybe 10 15 years earlier and you know looking at my own you know health path of where i want to be on the horizon because i'm not you know in a good way um and i you know definitely am trying to work on that but um you know when we talked about those things and having those conversations with doctors and we i got to you know share with um tiffany b who was a health professional and you know understood uh, having those you know Talking to doctors can be difficult, and, you know, intimidating even. And um, yeah, so I, that one kind of touched me from what I've, you know, recently experienced, perhaps. Okay. And I have another question regarding the format that we did, the people that we brought on. Yeah. Um, we started with the health, you know, stigmatizing, went to mental health. First of all, it was your health, you, you know, basic health. Then we looked at uh, mental health. Then we looked at diet and exercise. Then we also looked at activism because remember, all these three uh, parts that we started off had some activism in it because for sure. there was some form of losing and then you try to make up for what you lost. So, you know, you, you, you're fighting for your rights as a woman. So we had those three. And then finally, we talked about sports, which actually integrated everything. What do you feel about that? How did you feel it came out? Yeah, I mean, and really, like, it wasn't the, the design and plan. It just kind of 
happen that way organically, which really it makes it even more cool um, and, you know, something to, you know, stand back and, you know, really be proud of. I, you know, I'm proud of what we uh, completed here because it did come together organically and, um, and it really intentionally and really coming from a place of wanting to share information with our community. And, and, and that was really true. Like, well, you know, I want to talk about this, you know, this is something that's really, you know, impacting us, you know, I just lost my mom, you know, she dealt with all these health issues, you know, who can we, you know, and we like, it literally happened organically like that. So I just feel like, you know, and then all of the engaging comments that we got from people um, you know, whether they were in the circle or not, they still reached out and they didn't have to. So um, I'm proud of it. And I think it worked out well. So was, <laughs> and like I said, you know, I was kind of coming out of a funk and, you know, this brainstorming kind of putting our heads together just kind of, you know, worked. So I appreciate you um, being game for this and participating. I think I can say we did a good job with this one, mm -hmm. uh, Women's Month. Uh, considering that we started off with the Black History Month, which we just kind of put together like a challenge. I think this one was more more formatted and I like the format and here we are doing a wrap up show of four episodes worth of a lot of content that mm -hmm. I'm sure our listeners, viewers will enjoy as they go back and forth trying to you know, figure out where they may have missed out on, you know, from these clips and watch the rest of the show. And don't forget to like and subscribe because you're going to be missing out when the shows come out. You need to get that notification. <laughs> for sure. And thanks for the reminder. Please like and subscribe. You know, certainly you can uh, send feedback. And the socials are there. Um, Sabaz is very active on his socials. And you, know, you may want to go live with Sabaz. <laughs> you know, send him a note. And also, we talked about he is slated to be an ambassador at the 2024 Afros Audio. Hey, you may just want to buy some Baza a coffee for when he's in the airport, you know, or, you know, uh, help buy him dinner, you know, for him and a couple of creator friends. Hey, podcasters have to you know, need I'll resources. Take it. <laughs> so, I'll take it. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, this is definitely something that, you know, we take out of, you know, spare time, you know, away from our families and, you know, careers and, you know, make this happen because we enjoy it. But, you know, resources definitely are always um, welcome. And, you know, we try not, <laughs> we don't want to put anybody out by that. But, you know, we certainly would, you know, welcome anyone who would like to share um, or in support, you know, he is, um, and I'm actually trying to make that trip myself <laughs> to at the Afros and Audio uh, Podcast Festival in 2024 in Baltimore. And so maybe you want to, you know, uh, support a podcaster in a way. So let us know and, you know, we can let you know how you can make that happen. <laughs> All right, cool. For sure. I, I know I get, uh, I'm laughing about that because, you know, it's not something that we, <laughs> we well, you gonna know. Make it. We're going to be there. We're going to make it. For sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. Looking forward to that. That will be excellent. So we have talked about uh, these great episodes, which actually there was at five, right? Yeah, five. So 147, 148, 149, 150, and 151, um, where we talked about everything from health, internal, mental health, diet and exercise, activism, sports, um, so many different things. You know, this is a part of the culture. Um, and, you know, we definitely want to amplify these voices because they're important for sure. Um, so about, oh, we can <laughs> look at the time. Um, anything else to share? No, I'd like to say it was great hanging out today and looking forward to more. Oh, we have comments. Oh, yeah, the comments. Um, Tiffany B says the shows were very informative and I really enjoyed viewing. Thank you, Miss Tiffany B. Oh, wonderful. We appreciate that for sure. And again, uh, we will have the notes of all of our guests, uh, links and such in the uh show notes so um give us you know uh, some time in our 
audio episode will be up and shout out to Miss Demita, uh, hello, interesting, uh, who gave us a wave there. Shout out to her. We appreciate um, you tuning in and checking us out. Uh, Catch the replays for all the other episodes. And let's see, what else? Anything else, Sambasa? It's good night from me. All right. Okay. So, um, yeah, check us out again, guys. We will be uh, planning to be on again next Wednesday and the Wednesday after that. I have a, a, some a great guests um, coming up, but more on that later. Uh, All right. Anything else, Simbaza? No, I'm good. Uh, thanks okay. so much. And, uh, guys, good night. Okay. All right. See you guys next time and take care. <laughs> At this time, we're going to go ahead and conclude the episode. We greatly appreciate you listening. We invite you to follow us on social media. On Instagram, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. On Twitter, it is Woke by. On Facebook, it is Woke by Accident Podcast. We also have the new website up, www.wokebyaccident.net. Please check us out and also follow us on all of your favorite streaming platforms. And please leave a review and share feedback. You can also reach out by Gmail, wokebyaccident at gmail.com. And every time you listen, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for listening and take care.